Welcome to TV3. On this week's episode, we'll be covering cats, rubies, space, and of course, answering some of your comments and questions in the feedback section. Now, before we get started, there is one small thing I need to address, and that is the topic of real grade unicorn. On last week's episode, the common theme from almost everyone was, are you getting the real grade unicorn? Because it is the quote, God of the Gunpla, which I thought to myself was silly. Now, uh, to answer the first part of the question, yes, I will get one eventually, not anytime soon, but you can expect one on this channel at some point before the end of 2017. As for the second part, the whole God of the Gunpla thing, I just gotta know, where are you guys hearing this from? Because I'm pretty sure that not many of you out there at the time of posting your comments had one in hand, so I'm assuming you're straight up lying to me on your opinion or you heard from word of mouth from someone else and uh, I just don't like it when people just like to spout a bunch of but anyways, let's move on with the show. All right, the news this week kicks off with a big tease from Bandai as they have released a promotional image showing off the next Soul of Chigokin release. Or at least in this case, it might actually be a re-release and that is of The Big O. Now, I love The Big O. If you haven't seen The Big O, I definitely recommend checking it out. There's really nothing else to grab from this small little promotional image other than Full details will probably be released within the next coming days around August 18th. Now, I got into toy collecting long after this figure was released, so I've always wanted to get one, but on the secondary market, it seems to be way out of my price range. So in that sense, I am really pumped to see what this new version is going to be like. So stay tuned for details, and I'll make sure to follow up with it in the next coming weeks. Now my next item, I don't know how I missed this last week, I actually had it in my notes but I forgot to talk about it and a couple of you guys called me out on it in the comments and that is the recently, I guess approved Lego Ideas Lego Voltron. Now this looks incredible, it comes from a, it's a custom creation. It is of course a custom creation submitted to the Lego Ideas campaign. It got its 10,000 votes and amazingly it got approved. Now a lot of people of course when it comes to licensed materials are always you know a little bit cautiously optimistic because licensing is a very tricky thing but Voltron got approved and that's amazing. It's going to be a fully combining robot made of Lego. So you get five lines, they become the Voltron. It is styled after the classic Voltron. And apparently when it's fully combined, it's going to stand 16 inches tall and weigh nearly a kilogram. So that's a pretty hefty chunk of plastic. I can only imagine that the full retail release will be incredibly expensive. At the same time, I do wonder what kind of changes will need to be made from the official Lego team when they transition this from just a ideas project to an official item. But yes, this looks like a very cool project and I can't wait to see what the final edition turns out to be like. News from Medicos regarding their Super Action statue line, which is most popularly known as the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure toy line, and they are releasing a new figure that is not a JoJo figure, it is in fact a Ruby figure. That's right, R-W-B-Y. It is of Ruby Rose. Now, I was never the biggest fan of Ruby. I mean, Montium creates some really cool stuff, but I never really got into Ruby. However, I know it has a huge following and the outpour of collector level toys for this series has always been high and it's nice to see that it's finally getting some attention. I know there's a couple one sixth scale figures out there but for those of us who are looking something more in the one twelfth scale or six inch scale it's nice to see that someone is finally releasing something. I think the figure looks decent but then again it's based off of the character model from the show and the show isn't exactly um, I mean it's not the prettiest thing to look at so in that sense, I suppose this figure kind of emulates that really well. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely one of those toys that's not for me, but I thought it was worth mentioning because again, I know that there's a lot of fans out there and they uh, definitely deserve to see this. All right, and let's finish up the news segment with some Gundam announcements. And unfortunately, these next three announcements are all P Bandai exclusive. So yeah, that's a bit of a bummer, but here we go anyway. The first one is the Master Grade 
GM Command Space Type. Now, this is a really cool release. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the GM or the Jim or the GM or whatever you want to go and call it. However, it's nice to see that ever since the Sniper 2 got released, Bandai is definitely milking that mold for all it's worth and giving you multiple variants of the GM. And this is one of the cooler ones. It's red, it's sleeker, it's in space, does some cool looking things, and that gun looks pretty neat. I don't really have any attachment to this particular version but i know that it has it does have a big fan base a lot of people do like this uh, mobile suit and so it's nice to see that it's getting some attention next up is the real grade build strike in rg system colors now this is essentially just a clear edition of the real grade build strike which isn't too interesting to many people however i've always wanted a clear edition of the build strike especially in rg form just so i could take that clear blue inner frame and then put on the regular real grade armor onto it so that you could get the perfect version of the real grade build strike or the build strike as it appeared in the show when it has a blue glowing inner frame they did a similar idea with the master grade and i always meant to go after the clear edition of that and and implement this idea however with the master grade it just became too expensive for me to justify as a project so it's nice seeing it done here in the real grade scale and this is probably what i'm going to go after and definitely proceed with that idea of having a clear inner frame with the solid armor bits on top so yeah nice to see this now, by far the coolest reveal of the past week in terms of Gundams was the announcement of the high-grade build fighters Accelerate GNX. Now, this is just such a cool variant of the GNX from Gundam 00. I believe it's based on the GNX 4, however, it uses parts from previous editions of the mobile suit. I think the thing I love about it most is it's got this nice minty green color, and that he has these, uh, I guess, fins or, or boards that he surfs on. It gives me, like... That, in combination with the color for some reason, gives me these awesome Eureka 7 vibes, and I'm just all into it. It's a shame it's a P Bandai exclusive because I do think that this is one of those really neat original ideas that I feel like would have sold really well as a mass release. That said, it's uh, one that's definitely on my radar. Of all the P Bandai reveals in the past week, this is the one that I'm going to target specifically and definitely try and pick up. I hope I'm not the only one out there who thinks this is cool, uh, but if I am, I guess I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All right, so this week I only got one new item, and that is this. This is Solitaire from the Articulated Icons Kickstarter toy line by The Foosh. And it is basically their version of a modern ninja, a.k.a. Snake Eyes. And this is the only figure I wanted from the series. However, it was a add-on item that you could only get if you but I suppose bought other figures. Now, thankfully, my friend Matt was in on the Kickstarter, and he... Uh, allowed me to just add on one more to his order. And so he sent me this just last week. And so thank you, Matt. I can't wait to open this up and see what it's like. But yeah, otherwise it seems pretty cool. I've heard nothing but really neat things from this toy line and I'm excited to see if it was worth the wait. Let's take a look at the comments. And the first one comes from John Paul. Have you ever picked up or considered getting the Frame Arms Girls since you like the Gundam Girls? Now, this is a common question I get all the time, and I believe I've answered it once before in the past. But just to reiterate, yes, I think the Frame Arms Girls are super cool. I just don't like how they have this one signature aesthetic of having, I guess, unprotected, unprotected panties. Like... Their whole body is fully covered in armor from head to toe except their crotch area and in some instances they even include like water slide decals so you could have special white and blue striped panties and like to me that's just so weird and it's something that I don't really find cool at all. I think it's just it's just wrong. That said, I've always wanted a Gurai. I think I probably will just get one for the helmet because I've been super curious and i need to pick it up at this point but on a related note kotobukiya does another sort of mecha girl armor line in that is their megami device and they have recently revealed i believe it's uh megami device 6 archer that one looks cool and well i will be putting a pre-order in for that because i think that's just the coolest looking thing i've seen in a long time Infinity Haruka wants to know, what's your opinion on Play Arts Kai figures? Is it worth it to get one or two? I think Play Arts Kai figures are fine. They are this great alternative to having something that is large and yet 
somewhat still affordable and if anything they give you a lot of cool character designs they are a toy that's definitely more for display purposes i don't like really handling play arts kai figures they're just not fun to play around with and pose but if you just want something to put on your shelf that's that looks nice i think they're totally worth it because i mean they they're generally all hand painted stuff and they have amazing sculpts they look cool they're just not a size that i prefer to deal with i mean when it comes to action figures i prefer six inches and below or if i'm going to get anything bigger it's going to be from the one twelve one sixths or, or the sixth scale collectible market like a hot toys or whatnot so those are my feelings but if you if play arts if you see something in play arts car i definitely think it's worth a try and get one just to see for yourself you never know it might be your favorite toy line or it might not be so it's always worth checking out magical snickers bar asks do you think that third-party Transformers toys are better than the official stuff we get, such as one-step changers? Now, honestly, I believe the the question isn't really which is better than the other. It's rather who is releasing toys that appeal more to your tastes because the person buying one-step changers probably isn't the same person buying third-party Transformers. Now, as for objectively who makes a better product, I probably would say, yes, third-party makes better toys. However, there is a big caveat. The official stuff has to abide by rules. And by rules, I mean their toys have to stay within a restricted budget and they have safety concerns they have to deal with. So remember, they have limitations on what they're allowed to put out at retail. Third party stuff, the sky's the limit. They don't need a budget and they don't have any safety concerns, so they can make whatever they want. So if you put those things into context, then yeah, the third-party stuff should be better, but it also costs more, and it's more complicated. And more often than not, it's a bit more fragile and fussy to deal with. Whereas with the official stuff, you actually can get something you can play with. No, it might not be the best toy, collectible toy out there, but it is should suit your needs. So in that sense, again, it is more apples and oranges, and what does it... Which one suits your tastes more? For myself, uh, honestly, I don't really have one is better than the other. I just kind of pick and choose from both piles as to if I see something cool here, I'll buy it. If I see something cool there, I'll buy it. And that's generally how I do all my collecting. Jonas comments, you like your Gundam Build Fighter Girls. I like regular Gundams, but where is the bail? The bail's right here, Jonas. It's always been here. It's never not been here. I mean, maybe you were blind and you just didn't see it. But yes, the bail is right here. Uh, see? It's right here. It's a bail. Gundam bail. Cool. Happy? Next comment is from Warren, and he wants to know, which Macross series have you watched and which is your favorite out of them? Also, what are your thoughts on Macross zero i have watched the majority of macross i think the only one i never watched was macross 2 and well i guess macross 7 i got through the first 15 episodes and then just had to stop because i thought it was super boring so in that sense i guess macross 7 would be my least favorite but that's kind of an unfair opinion to have because i didn't see it through so macross 7 aside zero is my least favorite of all the macross that is by far just a piece of garbage followed by macross plus the most overrated macross the best macrosses are in this order from least to worst delta frontier sdf do you remember love there you go gotta love depeche mode asks are you going to get figma joker rg unicorn or maybe even the new amazing yamaguchi rebel tech line also what are your thoughts on the new and awesome persona announcements figma joker and rg unicorn are definite gets there's no way i was gonna ever pass those up as for the new rebel techs you know those marvel things those marvel releases i've been very tempted but i do not want to buy one until i'm able to handle one because I don't want to buy it and then just find out that it, oh, hey, it's still a Rebel Tech. Nothing's changed. So in that sense, yeah, I got to I'm very tempted, especially with the Marvel stuff. I mean, they shut off Magneto and Captain America and whew, those guys look awesome. But yeah, I definitely got to try out a friends first before I dive head on into that. As for the Persona announcements, it's cool. You know, I'm not really big into the dancing all night games. However, I love the soundtracks, so I won't buy the games, but I will buy the soundtracks as for Persona Q's 2, I still haven't played Persona Q's. I have a copy of it sitting in my backpack. In fact, it's been in my backpack for like the past year and as an emergency game to play whenever I'm stuck somewhere, but I've never had the opportunity to play it yet. Uh, if anything, I'm kind of disappointed there isn't a announcement for Persona 5 Arena. I would have loved to have seen that. 
However, with a Blaz Blue cross tag battle, I can see why they didn't announce another fighting game just yet. And finally, from Destracon Customs, have you seen Megas XLR? Now, first of all, apologies to you because I believe you've been asking me this question for the past couple of weeks and I kept forgetting to put it in. Uh, but here we go. I have not seen Megas XLR. I believe it was what on Cartoon Network or, or, Adult Swim, or I can't remember, but I know it was around the early to mid 2000s, and unfortunately, that was just the period of my life where I was in high school and I did not want to partake in anything that was perceived as being childish, so anime, cartoons, whatnot, and uh, I missed out on a lot of stuff during that period of time, so uh, I think it's something I'm gonna have to go back and check out, but unfortunately, no, I have not seen it. Sorry. <laughs> And there you have it, another episode of TV3 over and done with. As always, if you ever want to comment or just extend the conversation further, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to get to it in a matter of weeks. As for me, I'm out of here. I've got a ton of things to do, so I will see you all in the next seven days. Bye.